yeah, let's just see how we, what they say about Israel here. Whew. Welcome to Israel, a small country in the Middle East that sits by the Mediterranean Sea. This holy no, hold on. We're gonna have to go back there. Yeah, can we see um, that? that <laughs> the Middle I hope East. they're using this... Greater Israel. <laughs> Let's go. We okay. got the Golan Heights. In the there. Golan Heights are included. <laughs> uh, the Golan Heights, um, which Miriam Adelson, the um, big Z number one, I think Zionist um, spender in the elections these days, uh, former wife of the dead, Sheldon Adelson. Um, a uh, big time Zionist, uh, I think pedophile guy, but I don't have to worry about slandering him because he's dead. Um, but anyway, um, she said that that was the big ask was the Iran deal um, mm. uh, for 2016 is uh, she'll donate to Trump if he gets rid of the Iran deal. And then she said the Golan Heights were a nice little bonus, almost like they're throwing in like a baker's dozen. For people who don't know, the Golan Heights were occupied along with the West Bank and, Bank and Gaza and also the Sinai Peninsula. Um, in the 67 war, um, uh, uh, which Israel launched. Um, yeah. And, uh, cause they needed some, uh, elbow room basically. Um, and so, yeah, that's just, you know, in interesting, the inclusion of the Golan Heights and, um, but also not including the West bank and the Gaza strip is, um, one, uh, behind, I think the cutting edge of the Israeli right now, which can, uh, including BB Netanyahu. Well, did this come out? Yeah, exactly. Like Bibi Netanyahu shows maps with those as part of Israel all the time. Um, but when you do consider those part of Israel, the whole this is a democracy where everyone gets to vote thing becomes a little bit suspect. But anyway, that's, uh, we're only eight seconds in. <laughs> Mediterranean Sea. This holy land of three faiths is talked about around the world and attracts over three million Talk visitors about. each year. This land became the home of the Jewish people 4,000 years ago, but most of them were expelled from their homeland after many wars and could not return until decades later. Mm. By 1948, following World War II, the Jewish people's prayers were finally answered and Israel was granted the legal right to exist by the United Nations. But even from the beginning, maintaining that existence wasn't easy. For decades, the United States has been one of their strongest allies. The U.S. was the first country to recognize Israel as a legitimate state, and the first to recognize Jerusalem as its capital. Both nations are unique. That was, uh, of course, under uh, Donald Trump. Um, no mention of the USSR, uh, also very early in yeah. uh, recognizing Israel, uh, uh, shamefully, unfortunately. Um, I mean, there's, there's so much to kind of like quibble with uh, i mean i got let's let it run a little bit more united in their commitment to economic prosperity mm. strong national defense individual freedoms and a okay, political okay. system based on free elections mm. these shared objectives keep their bonds strong both countries have had to fight wars for their freedom and independence <laughs> and israel's fight for survival continues to now okay so we have to just comment a little bit on that independence period uh 1948 where the un uh and uh, britain basically decided this what was palestine in the ottoman empire becomes israel um that uh was a colonial enterprise um that uh i, I mean there's so much to like like <laughs> Uh, like literally we talk about like terrorism, right? The anti-colonial, you could call them Zionists, which ultimately were asking Britain to give them the colony, not um, to just say, leave it to the indigenous folks. That was done through terrorism. Menachem Begin, who later became the prime minister of Israel, was leader of a group that bombed the King David Hotel. Mm -hmm. If that was bombed, if that exact thing happened, but the goal was a multi-ethnic democracy without the British empire there, it would have been good. It wasn't that. It was a bombing to create a Jewish ethno state in that part of the, the world. And when you talk about like the, well, they're going to get it a little bit to, your, to talk about the wars of independence. The leaders of Israel knew very clearly that we need to expel people because the, the demographics don't work here. Um, we need 
um, more numbers if we're going to be a quote unquote democracy um, and we need less um, Arabs, Palestinians here. And so they were expelled. Rashid Khalidi's book, The Hundred Year Wars on, uh, War on Palestine, is the best sort of uh, mm-hmm. introduction, I think, probably to this. Well, let's let it continue a little bit more. This day. This is Shira. She lives with her Jewish family in an apartment in Israel's second most populous city, Tel Aviv. Two blocks from her house is a mixed Arab-Jewish city called Jaffa. Like many other 13-year-old girls, Shira enjoys hanging out with her friends after school. But her best friend is Yasmin, a Muslim girl from Jaffa. Shira and Yasmin have been friends since they were eight years old. They love to play soccer together, and practice both Hebrew and Arabic with each other. While the girls have many differences in cultures and religious beliefs, they also have a lot in common and enjoy learning from one another. Like the United States, Israel is a nation of immigrants, which prides itself on its freedoms for... Now, okay, so we got to get into this nation of immigrants. Thing yeah, that's, that's actually kind of important. Uh, <laughs> so... And it's interesting, like areas where Muslims still live within uh, within Israel as how diverse currently existed. Well, those were the ones that were not able to be expelled. Uh, the in uh, Rishi Khalidi's Hundred Year Wars of Palestine, Nazareth, um, particularly, they're like, you know, we can't really <laughs> ethnically cleanse Nazareth because the goddamn Americans have heard about that. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to need to leave that be. A little, a little fellow from there. We can leave a little bit of diversity um, in there, just as long as it doesn't uh, grow faster than us um, and is within little confines like in Gaza and the West Bank, where we don't have to pretend to give them any sort of political rights um, within the country that actually controls uh, it. Um, But Gigi Hadid um, and Bella Hadid's father, I believe, uh, maybe it's a grandfather, but I believe it's a father, um, has the key to their family's house Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, within Israel. Um, they cannot immigrate there. Uh, they can't uh, <laughs> immigrate there to get their house back that they mm-hmm. still have the key to um, uh, because uh, Israel is a Jewish supremacist state in law. Um, this has been, we've covered this under the Michael Brooks show. Um, they literally just said constitutionally, this is for Jews. Sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. And again, Tony Judd. Uh, Israel, the alternative piece in the New Yorker, two th- early 2000s, it says all you need to know about how retrograde of idea that is. Another. Like the United States, Israel is a nation of immigrants, which prides itself on its freedoms for all citizens, hmm. no matter their religion, ethnicity, or race. Okay. Over 70 different nationalities live in this small country. Uniquely, Israel is the only country in the Middle East that does not oppress its minority populations. What the yeah. hell? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Just go for it. You just say whatever you <laughs> What the fuck? That's so insane. I mean, so it's like, you know, are you kidding me? This is, this is a country which, by the way, you know, you got to get the state involved if you want to be having uh, interfaith, if, if you want to marry a Palestinian, Right. Uh, I mean, what are we talking about here? Within this conflict, there was a, uh, I guess what they call it. Trigger you video on why interfaith or interracial marriage is bad. Uh, Yeah. Actually, it's not oppression. Like, I I, I can't get this out. This is like October, November last year. Um, Palestinian woman within Israel, uh, Israeli citizen, was arrested by cops. Uh, over a Facebook post where she was wishing everyone was safe. And they assumed that she was like supporting the, uh, the uh, Palestinians that were killed. She was literally not. She was literally saying, I hope all of uh, Israelis, which I consider myself, uh, to be safe. And, but because she was a Israeli Arab or a uh, Palestinian, um of descent she was suspected of being uh a terrorist sympathizer and arrested like this is the freedoms we're talking about here um i mean let's do a couple more minutes maybe 
Israel's laws and Supreme Court rulings protect the rights of all its people from being jeopardized. Shira is thankful for the melting pot these freedoms have created. Shira has learned that this diversity. No, this again, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, this there, is like really, uh, I, I, I was not, not expecting it to be as extreme as this. Yeah, there is a demographic imperative within Israel. That's the only reason Gaza and the West Bank are not fully annexed proper, uh, which is some of the right want to do because they're fine uh, with ha- having an apartheid state. Um, but Israel uh, doesn't want to consider Gaza and the West Bank um, in terms of internationally part of Israel because they're not going to let those motherfuckers vote. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You're going to think you have a, a Gaza, uh, uh, you know, vote in the Knesset? Not until you expel all the people there and replace them. Mm-hmm. It didn't happen quickly or easily. Israel has a rich and complex past dating back to ancient biblical times oh, and the 12 tribes descended from Jacob, the grandson of Abraham. The Bible chronicles how the United Tribes of Israel settled in the land that God had promised them, made Jerusalem their capital. Yeah, I mean, I don't need any of this Bible story shit. We can def- duck out here. Uh, all that's not relevant um, to anything. It's it's fantastical uh, to the extent that it is grounded in history. It Don't care. You don't get to say, uh, we're going to now expel people uh, into different parts of the world uh, from their homes, uh, you, you know, just because of what thing a holy book says. I can't even, even, even with all of the controversy around some of those McGraw Hill textbooks, you know, we talk about how, you know, for example, like the Texas standards end up being like very influential over like what makes it into history, you know, uh, te- textbooks for, for kids all across the country. I, I mean, maybe I could be wrong about this, but I have a feeling, um, that it might not be as egregious as saying Israel is the only country in the Middle East that does not oppress its minority citizens. Yeah, it it, it uh, works to remove them to other uh, countries uh, is actually what Israel does. Yeah, I mean, that's that is outrageous. Um, so th- and that's a great thing, you know, I mean, you know, and, and the thing is, is this is that like, I don't know, I, I reckon you probably were similar to me. I was a very curious young man. Um, I didn't find oftentimes all of the resources, uh, that, you know, I wanted or had, you know, there are people always to sort of point me in the right direction on things. So I spent a lot of time in, in the library at our school and things like that, just sort of reading about, you know, learning about things. I can't imagine, um, you know, not being particularly interested in these like, you know, animated videos about all these places. Oh, Israel, I've been hearing a lot about that on the news. I mean, really, really despicable uh, to force that on, on 